last Friday, Hanoi were treated with an impeccable performance from world's famous violinist Stefan Jacu and his peer pianist Anna Polosky. With his ability to take the audience into the very soul of each note, Stefan Jacu showed himself to be one of the best and most interesting young violinists heard in a long time. Our reporter Lei Huang Ling sat down with him and talked about his passion to bring chamber music closer to the audience. Please enjoy. Born in 1985 to the physicist parents of Korean and German descent, Stefan Jakiv has appeared as soloist with a lot of prestigious symphony orchestras across the world. He is hailed for playing of uncommon musical substance that is striking for his intelligence and sensitivity. Jakiv is the recipient of an Avery Fisher Korea grant for his outstanding musical talent. Hi Stefan and thanks very much for joining us today. Great to be uh, here. It's interesting to know that both your parents are physics professors while you are the only one in the family pursuing music career. So how did it start for you? Well, my parents are not musicians but they love music. When I was growing up, they took me to a lot of concerts and we listened to a lot of music together at home. And um, I started playing the violin by accident. Um, some family friends gave me a tiny violin for my fourth birthday. And I started taking violin lessons and here I am in Hanoi. So when was the defining moment that you really decided that classical music was something that you wanted to do? There wasn't really one moment where I decided this is what I want to do. It was sort of a gradual process. I became more and more interested in music and um, enjoyed playing it more and more. Um, I remember even when I was eight years old that I enjoyed playing music more than I did anything else. So the love was there early on. But I would say not until I was maybe 15 or 16 was I sure that this is what I was going to be doing with my life. So is there anyone that has a particularly influenced how you play? I think I was very lucky that I had really excellent teachers, people who taught me how to play the violin well when I was young, and also people who taught me how to think about music and what it means to be a performer and how, to, how important it is to respect the composer's work and how we are really servants of the music, um, servants to the composer. So I would say my teachers are the ones who have influenced me in that. You once said in an interview that the job of an instrumentalist is recreating someone else's creations that have been played hundreds or thousands of times and you are definitely not the main event. So where are you in that process? I think you should disappear into the music. For me, if I see a film or a play, the most convincing performances are the ones where you're not noticing the actor's own personality, but really they disappear into the character and they become that character. So I think performers should sort of disappear into the music and become the soul of the composer or the soul of the piece and really sort of be a vessel for that. If our priority is to show our own personality, then we should write music ourselves rather than play somebody else's music. So which composer do you like to play the most and why? Um, it's hard for me to pick a favorite composer. Um, I think Mozart is someone who I feel his music feels really close to me. His music has this sort of very human quality. You can hear joy and sadness and longing and humor 
and interaction, with conversations between instruments. So that, that, human, that human aspect is something that I loved back then and continue to love today. So maybe Mozart might be my favorite to perform. For the Hennessy concert in Hanoi, Jack Keefe initially chose Mozart and Bram Sunetas as the opening and the closing. However, several days before the concert, he decided to change the program slightly, to open with the Tigan by Maurice Ravel and close with the Frank Violin Sonata. So I learned that you picked all the pieces in this concert. Can you uh, tell us a little bit more about your choice? First of all, I love all these pieces. Second, I feel that they go together in an interesting way. I think it's sort of a journey from darkness and loss, ultimately to light and hope and joy. And that arc, that journey, is something that I think a lot of people can relate to. Um, also, the Ludoslavsky and Sarajevo are both masterpieces which I think may not be performed very frequently in Vietnam, maybe never before. So, as a performer, I kind of want to introduce music that I love to new audiences, especially if they haven't heard it before. Um, so that's exciting for me to kind of be an ambassador for these pieces. So Stefan has chosen this program that is that can be played in London's Whitmore Hall, in New York's Carnegie Hall, or in Paris' South Playel. It's a very um, well-crafted and beautifully crafted program that can go on any concert stage, also in Vietnam. So we, we thought it was a nice challenge for the Vietnamese, Vietnamese public. Using every inch of his bow, Jacket produces a large, firm melting tone of great purity and centeredness. chơi cho anh ta tôi nghĩ như thế cũng không phải vì ai đâu mà bởi vì anh ta cảm nhận cái bài đấy nó hay như thế nào thì người ta chơi ra như thế và tôi không biết mọi người như thế nào nhưng tôi thì tôi cảm nhận được rất là rõ những cái ý đồ cũng như là những cái chủ ý của Stefan làm trong cái chương trình lần này. The concert was also simulcast to the big screen for the general audience at the square in front of Hanoi Opera House. Although the program was intellectually challenging. Hanoi music lovers had a fulfilling night of high-quality performance that expanded the horizon of their hearing experience. In your opinion, what should be done to preserve the integrity of classical music while keeping it exciting and culturally relevant for young people? I don't want to preserve it in the sense of like keep, you know, keep it behind a glass case like in a museum. I think you know. Music is something that needs to be out there and needs to be heard by as many people as possible. And um, as long as the composer's intentions are, are treated with integrity, then it doesn't need any more preservation than that. Um, I, I love listening to music in concert halls, but I think hearing classical music in different environments, outdoors, in clubs, any, anywhere that people are open to hearing music, I think is a good place for classical music to be heard. What can the audience expect from your future plans? I always try to expand my repertoire. Each year I try to learn at least one new major work. Um, I'm really committed to contemporary music, so premiering new works is another thing I'm passionate about, and I have some projects in the works. Um, and they'll have to come to my concerts to see what to expect. Good luck with your future endeavors. Thanks, thanks for having me.